you very much. Thank you, BCIT, for this wonderful evening. It's a tremendous honour to share the stage tonight with the other honorees and with all of you. When Paul McCullough phoned me earlier this year and told me I was being considered for this award, I was speechless. I was completely speechless. And I know what some of you are thinking. That's impossible. She's never quiet, let alone speechless. But how does a little girl from Canal Flats find herself on the stage for an evening that is celebrating the importance of leadership for a complex world? And how does a kid from the Kootenays get on the radar of one of the world's most exceptional educational institutions in BCIT? Well, I've had some time to ponder those questions, and so I'm not speechless anymore. I am here because for the past 60 years, I have been mentored, supported, and guided by some, tru by some truly exceptional people. And I'd like to thank a few of them over the next few minutes. I had the good fortune to choose exceptional parents. Or as Nadia said the other day, face it, mom, they were really weird. Two immigrant school teachers who arrived in Canada in search of hope, opportunity, and adventure. Two more different people you could not imagine. My mother was governed by structure, order, and discipline. There was never an excuse for doing second best. There was no ailment known to man that could not be cured by hard work and determination. And yes, I know some of you are thinking apples and trees, but hang on a sec. My dad was the opposite. My dad was the adventurer. My dad never took for granted the incredible privilege we have by just being Canadian. My dad was always looking for that problem to solve that people said was impossible to solve. And my dad was never afraid of being the first at anything. And he spent his entire life bringing people together who were different in every way because he thought that was the way to find the solution to a problem. My parents were always there to give me advice and guidance. And yes, Nadia, you were right. Some of it was weird, like the time when I was a teenager and I said I was very, very lonely. And my dad said, right then, let's go. And we got in a boat and we sailed up to Bella Coola and we worked with some of the First Nations folks and they came on board and we spent several days off the shores of Bella Coola and then into the forest looking for petroglyphs on our own with nobody around for days and days because I was lonely. But my parents aren't here anymore in the flesh. I am sure they are circling around somewhere in this room and so thanks mom and dad and thanks to all the mom and dads in the room who are truly taking on one of life's most important and challenging uh, missions, and that is to raise inspired kids. When I finished school, I had the privilege of working with some of the most brilliant legal minds in the province at Russell and Dumoulin, now Fask and Martineau. It was as, at Russell and Dumoulin that I actually had my first formal engagement with BCIT, and that was actually as a baby lawyer working on the legal team that was advising BCIT. And I remember sitting in the room and I was completely riveted by the legal issues. But what really struck me was how these people from BCIT were so concerned about the impact of the decisions on the people at the institution. They were very concerned about how this decision or that policy was going to impact students or staff or faculty. And it was that moment that for the very first time I realized that outstanding, resilient organizations are not the product of legal advice. Now, don't get me wrong, you all have to use your lawyers and we need lawyers in society. But what I realized was that strong, exceptional institutions are the product of fantastic leadership who realize that the success of the organization that they lead is in their people. And so it is no surprise at all to me 
that today at BCIT we have one of the province's most exceptional leaders in Kathy Kinlock and that it is through Kathy BCIT is taking on one of society's most important and exciting imperatives and that is to find a way to build and grow leaders for a complex world. In those early days at, at R&D, I also had my most memorable and life-changing experience with BCIT. I was asked to join the board of the BCIT Foundation. I was about 25. I didn't know what the BCIT Foundation was, and I certainly didn't know what the board was. But off I went to BCIT, found the appointed room, looked through the door, and saw a straight shot right through to Dr. Don Ricks, one of the most iconic names in healthcare even then. And next to him was Marty Zlotnick, and around the room at this table were names of people who I had only seen in the newspaper or seen their faces on television. I was definitely in the wrong room. But then I saw a tent card with my name on. And so I walked in the room, I sat at the table, and for the next several years, I learned at the shoulders of some of the truly great leaders in this province, and that was thanks to BCIT. I learned about how critical it would be to find that marriage between applied learning and the needs of businesses and communities. And I learned then that the purpose of BCIT and the primary role was to inspire students and to help them be prepared for an ever-changing world. Walking through that door at BCIT changed my life. It imprinted on me forever that I would strive for the rest of my career and the rest of my life to support and inspire the people around me. For the past 10 years with Life Labs, first as a member of the Board of Directors and more recently as the President and CEO, I have been surrounded by truly wonderful people. There are two probably noisy tables of life, labs out, life labbers out here who first and foremost wake up in the morning thinking about the millions of Canadians who rely on life labs every year and they care about each other. People like David Podmore, Jennifer Cudlip, Donna Wilson, Hasham Mustafa. I could go on, but there's 5,400 of them and I'd run out of time. Life Labs enjoys a terrific relationship with BCIT. And as I get ready to leave, li leave Life Labs very shortly, it is incredibly heartwarming for me to know that together BCIT and Life Labs will be making sure that we inspire leaders for the future for a complex world. I also have the benefit of many years of mentorship and guidance from some truly exceptional people. Let's face it, anyone who could include Carol Taylor, Nancy McKinstry, and Elio Luongo in their universe is indeed a lucky person. Thank you for your brilliance, and thank you for your tolerance for all of my wacky ideas. And so I'm gonna end where I started, with my family. Everything I do, I do to build a better community for my kids and all of their friends. And in today's world, that's all of your kids. It would be impossible for me to do what I do and to be here today without the unwavering support of Brad over the last 36 years. Some of you think I'm a little weird to work with. You should try living with me. <laughs> Diana, Kyla, and Nadia, you've grown up with a very unusual mom. You've always given me candid advice, even when I didn't want it, and especially on my choice of fashion. You have grounded me, like the time when I was explaining to Kyla what it was going to be like when I became managing partner of Fask and Martineau, how I was going to be away a lot, how I was going to travel a lot, I was going to have to work a lot more, but I was going to learn so much. I was going to gain experience and skills so that when I finished, I could do anything I wanted. And without taking a breath, she looked at me and she said, Mom, you might be able to work in a pet store. Who knows, maybe I will. But first and foremost, girls, you have been my greatest friends and my most loving supporters. And so, I am exceptionally privileged to be Canadian. 
I am profoundly honored to be part of the BCIT community. I'm exceptionally lucky to be supported by friends, family, and colleagues. And this kid from Canal Flats happily accepts the opportunity to work with BCIT to nurture and inspire tomorrow's leaders for a complex world. I am indeed grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you.